Hello, this is Darren Pulsifer, Chief Solution Architect of Public Sector at Intel, and welcome to Embracing Digital Transformation, where we investigate effective change leveraging people, process, and technology. On today's episode, we're going to talk about communication during transformation with special guest Ann Medea. When the solutions are deployed and they involve organizational change and process change, what are some of the tips and tricks that you have uh, for CIOs that know? Because I think we all know anytime I deploy a new solution, there is going to be new process around it. There is going to be some organizational change more than likely. Mm-hmm. So what, I mean, what tips do you have for CIOs that are going through that? Well, if I look at cloud, right? So we have lots of data centers and there's lots of companies and lots of organizations reevaluating those data center strategies. Um, We, once we put in this new transformation program, the latest one, we knew we had to, we, we knew we had to move forward with cloud, right? So there had been a decision at the global level um, by my global CIO that we would have a multi-cloud strategy. So we had Google, AWS and and Azure for different use cases. And I had a lot of business partners that were saying, we need it, we need it, we need it. I mean, those are the guys that are really like pushing forward. And that's, you know, that's really what you want, the real support. So we, we had to hire a head of cloud. You know, there's a, there, there's definitely a sense of, especially people that have been doing this for a long time, infrastructure, a lot of change that's going to happen and a lot of risk and a lot of concern when you start looking at cloud right but we we ended up implementing it out of the united states for the americas and then at first you know it's like oh cloud you know how gosh i guess i have to get training we started with a program and we really encourage strongly encourage people to start getting those certifications for cloud for Google, AWS, I took my team, we would have meetings at Google in New York, at one of the sites in New York. And I bring them in and they go, wow, look at this. I mean, if you've ever been to a site, you know, a Google site, um, it is really something, right? So I'd say, you know, can we bring our team in there for a meeting? And you'd walk around and you'd see the energy and you'd see what was happening and the collaboration and how people were working together. That's what we needed. You know, I, I had a team that was slowly starting to say, we need to get certified. And I still have people, you know, I just got certified in Google. I just got certified in Azure, you know, and to see the excitement and the transformation from saying, we need to move this organization in a different direction. We need to start leveraging cloud and to start seeing people get excited. We gave them date, you know, I, I'm sure a lot of people are doing this, right? Fridays are training day, take, or half a day, take that Friday afternoon, take that Monday morning, right? And, and a lot of people were doing it on the weekends because you had people that were so excited about this transformation that they were just ready to go. And, you, you know, they'd spend, I had one who was doing all his training on Saturday mornings. So I think this is, you, you hit something really cool here, taking them into Google, yeah. showing them the excitement of the future. Because a, a lot of people are concerned about their jobs. They're, you know, they're, they're concerned that to feed their family. They're concerned, you know, where's that paycheck coming from? And everything's moving to the cloud. I'm not going to have a job. And what you did was brilliant. You said, we're going to take you into Google so you can see what your job's going to turn into. Have That's a meeting exactly there. right. And yeah. what, I mean, that is wonderful. And then <laughs> I'm guessing you guys paid for the certification and the training. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you paid for it. You gave them time to do it. Yeah. Um, this, is, this is really engaging your people and excite, getting them excited about it. And yeah. I think that's, I mean, that's an incredible way to go about doing this. And we had Google days where, you know, my head of cloud, where he would, he would just say, we're going to have Google days and we would have people come in and present and they present their use cases and they'd say, here's some of the products and here's how we're leveraging it. So we got them re- and I, I keep focusing on Google, but we did the same with, with um, Amazon and a little bit with Azure, which was, was, you know, the use cases were a little bit less, but, um, and it was really getting 
you know, the cloud days I thought were ingenious, you know, but by me had a cloud and just really getting people and they, they come out of the meetings and go, wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know we could use it for this. I just understood this product. So you built up all this excitement around it and then you enabled them to participate, which awesome. wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. So it was really exciting. And, you know, and we move forward and like I said, people are still, they're still getting certified. They're still really, I mean, that's the future, right? That is the future. And, and then you've got your business partners who are saying, goodness, you know, I just need, I need this tool. I need to get on cloud. I need to do the analytics. You know, you've got to, how do you acquire new customers? How do you retain your existing customers? All those different business issues you know, our, there's a lot of really great tools out there that they can start leveraging. And so they were really pushing us to. All right. So let's say that you are a CIO, you're in the middle of this transformation. What, what would you say people, a, a CIO needs to focus on first assessment first? I'm, first or, they have to communicate. Well, interesting. That that's, that's or a a, assessment or strategy or communication. I mean, which comes first? Yeah. Uh, trust, but verify. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So trust, but verify means you may be, for whatever reason, you're getting updates. So when I took over the CIO role, I was from the former leader. I was told really focus on, you know, reestablishing the relationships with the regulators, the board, um, reviewing the team, you know, different things like that. So really fo budgets, really focusing on that. And Three months into it, three, four months into my CI, I thought, oh, you know what? This is a major program. I need to do a more of a deep dive. And so my boss came in, um, my the global CIO, he came in and we, we did a review of the program and realized uh, we didn't have a plan that showed how this program was going to deliver. And so that was sort of the start of re-evaluating the leadership team and really how are we going to get this program moving forward again? And how are we going to deliver? So I think you really have to go in and understand, like I said, trust, but verify. You have to get your hands dirty. For anything like that, you have to get your hands dirty. You have to review everything. You have to interview the team. One stream of information from one or two people is not enough on something that big or something that that's transfer that is that transformational. So you have to get your hands dirty, you have to understand, and then you have to start communicating and you have to be able to say, you have to be transparent. So it's nice when you're new and you can come in and say, well, I've just done a review and you know, you're really in trouble or here's where we need to put our focus, but you have to be transparent about the issues you're seeing so that you can get the support that you need from the people who are going to be able to provide it. That's the I, first thing. Yeah, I, I like I like when you said you can't get all your information from one stream of data. Can't. Um, and I, I think it's interesting because I remember when I was a CIO, the filtering that was going on uh, to get things up to me, and I wasn't getting... I wasn't getting the right information. It's such an issue. You have to talk to the programmers. Yeah, you have to that's to what I ended up having to do. Yeah, That's exactly right. Those are the people that are getting, but they have to trust that you're not going to use it again. They have to trust you that you're going to take that information and not use it against them. Because honestly, if they don't trust you, you're not going to get any information. And thus the reason I was sitting around the floor and gaining gaining the trust of the whole team, you know, but you have to be transparent. And, you know, one thing that my team knows is you never surprise me and I never surprise my bosses, right? So you'll say we have an issue in the data center or something is happening. Here's what I know, but most of it I don't know, but I will keep you updated. What your team wants to know is how they fit into the success of that program. They don't just want to know, I have to code these five programs. They want to know where they fit in and how they're contributing to the success. And, and that, that's always difficult, right? Is understanding, 
is make is the fact that you have to know that and that you know as any leader it, whether it's a transformation program or whether it's anything organizational transformation anything the team needs to know where they fit and so what we did is we put together a whole communication plan so we did town halls constantly um i walked around the floors we did i i did a 30 minute update meeting every single week it was informal people were able to ask questions letters um we would any time there was a big meeting and there were decisions made i pulled the whole team together and i mean the whole team together wow. the business side the technology side and said here's what came out of this meeting and here's how it's going to impact Well, because you. they know the meeting happened they do and they want to know they're and they like wanna, and and if you don't tell them they're going to make stuff up that's i love that that's exactly right and yeah, just, just like my kids, they make up stuff all the time. <laughs> if you don't tell them the truth about things, they just make stuff up. That's exactly, and the, the, oh my gosh, the rumor mill, you know, I'd walk around and go, what are the rumors? Like, you know, I, I, people I trust, like, what are the, what are you hearing on the floor? And so then you'd say, oh my gosh, where are they getting this from? You know? So if you have that communication and a lot of times they would see us because we had open, you know, we had doors that everything was see-through so they could see that we were meeting. And so it was so important to say the meeting went really, really well, or it didn't quite, it wasn't quite where we needed to do, but this is what I need in order to get back to them. So it was always that. So how do you do that in today? I mean, we got remote workers now. I mean, it's a, it's oh. very different than walking around the shop floor. Yeah. It's very different than, you know, cube hopping. Yeah. Um, so how do, how do you handle that today? You find 10 or 15 minutes to check in with people. You just do. Mm -hmm. I, I never had hierarchy in my organization. Anybody could come in and talk to me. Anyone could come in and speak with me. If somebody requests 10 or 15 minutes, they got it. it. It might be a couple yeah. days later. But if you continuously check in, not necessarily even as a group, but as a one off, right? And say they come to you, or, you know, I'd say, you know, um, Susie or whatever, I need to talk to you for 10 or 15 minutes. I just want to hear, you know, what are your thoughts? How is this going? It's so important. And since it's frequent enough, I mean, mm -hmm. they know you. It's not like, because I've had this happen before. They call them skip level interviews, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My uh, and my boss would say, OK, now this is not my current boss. So, Rick, you're hearing this is not you. Previous bosses somewhere. Yeah. They, they'd say, I need to prep you for your skip level. With my boss, I'm like, huh? Interesting. Yeah, you can say this, but not this. I'm like, OK, that's not the purpose of a skip level. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No, skip levels are you're really able to have an open dialogue. Open di but but you could do that easily because you were always available. It's true. Right. So people weren't, oh, no, the big boss is going to talk to me. It's like, hey, I'm going to talk to Ann today. No big yeah. deal. You know, I talked to Ann. That's the culture leaders need to create. They have yeah. to understand what's going on in the organization. They have to understand What's motivating their team? What are they concerned about? You said it earlier, people have families to feed. They have children in college. They have um, families with medical issues. I mean, they need to understand where they fit in the organization. So you do, you know, the leader at the top and, and one's immediate boss has a real impact on the employee. Somebody, you know, it, it's such a common thing where people will leave an organization, not because of the organization, but because of their direct boss. I, oh, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's uh, what I, there, there was some survey I read, I think Harvard Business Review that talked about that. People yeah. don't leave, leave companies, they leave managers. That's exactly right. Spot on. So you have to be, it's now, of course, there's a lot of things that are going to happen. You're not in any organization where you're not going to be able to necessarily be able to discuss everything things that are happening right everything like organizational transformation or reductions unfortunately reductions in staff or promotions or whatever but and and i think it's important also we used to have a quarterly we just called it the people meeting and we would come in and we would say who's ready for a promotion you know who has approached you about a promotion they're they're you know they're putting their hand in the air saying i want to do something different and so i think having just people conversations for a couple of hours once a quarter to understand your staff, what they're looking to do. I think that's really important as well. And these would be like open meetings or uh, people with in my the room directs. with your yeah. directs. 
and sometimes the one down. So I, I, I try yeah, yeah, I try not to leave it always as my leaders because you know it's always that filter. We talked about that earlier, the filter. You want to hear from the one downs as well. So we would include them in and just have a real open conversation because they're more on the, you know, they're more on the day to day and they yeah. probably know more that's going on. Yeah. Great insight. And, um, wow. I, I learned a lot now. I'm, I'm going back and thinking, man, I could have done that better when I was <laughs> we all could, a, a director or when I was CIO, man, I thought, Oh yeah. Man. <laughs> no wonder that person quit. Yeah. I, I get it now. Um, Wonderful. Thanks, Ann, for uh, for coming on the show today. We most definitely want uh, you to come back. Um, uh, it's been very in insightful uh, from um, the projects that you've worked on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. I really appreciate you inviting me to this. I really enjoyed it. Thanks for listening to Embracing Digital Transformation today. If you liked our episode, go ahead and give us five stars on your favorite podcast or video streaming site. You can also find out more on embracingdigital.com. Until next time, keep moving forward and do something wonderful.